uh, but make sure that you're looking uh, at this lower part of the, the stalk because that's where these root rots are going to come in at. Uh, we've had a lot of moisture this year and they can come in early season, uh, but if the plant stays healthy, they may not develop into anything major. Uh, but if it's not and the plant's compromised from leaf diseases or things like that, like we got going on right now, um, it can allow these root rots to come in. Hi, and welcome back to another agronomic update here in North Central Iowa. I'm Phil Long, regional agronomist with Liquid Grow, out in the cornfield today talking about stock rots. So as you can see in the background here, this corn is plenty green. This is a great time to go out and evaluate stock rots. So just to give you an idea, this field is, is around 30% milk line. Uh, if you're earlier planted, you're probably over 50% milk line at this point, uh, depending on planting date and, and maturity as well. Uh, but this is a great time to go out and evaluate stock rot. So first thing is, is, is how to evaluate them when you get to the field. So I, I think that the easiest way, and a lot of people, when you come out of the truck and you get in through the head, headlands, you're going to push through those rows. That's exactly what you need to do, except out in the middle of the field, not in the end rows. You're pushing those plants over. You're going to be pushing them at least 10 to 30%. That's going to find out uh, if we have an issue buckling at the knees here, there'd be stock rot issues. So that's number one. The number two thing to look for is, is just, as you can see here, it's plenty green. This plant here, I just pulled and it was this pale right now. Looked like it was dying, losing its green color. That's the next thing you want to look for is any plant that's out of place in terms of color. Um, I, I pulled a couple of them here, you can see. And this one actually the top broke off but you can see this one i pulled it was it was more just red uh, i just wanted to kind of was curious on this one to see if it has a stock rot issue but uh, a lot of times that red color just means an accumulation of sugars uh, and it can do that in different plant parts a lot of times it's lower stem but the stem the stock excuse me on that one um, looked good and healthy when i pulled that one apart here um, no major issues that's that's exactly what we want to see a nice white color in the lower stock the crown and so forth so i'm going to walk through this but i want to talk about how stock rots get into the plant because that's kind of indi indicative on where you want to look for it so stock rots are going to infect through the roots uh, lower part of the stem so nodes roots uh, scars uh, from insects or, or damage hail things like that whatever damages the lower stock or feeds on the roots or lower stock can cause an entry wound um, but like I mentioned, the nodes, the roots, uh, even the crown. The crown is that very lower part when you split the stalk down through the, the root system. That crown's that little triangular part at the very bottom um, where all those uh, nodal roots, the nodes one through four kind of accumulate, coalesce there. That's the crown of the plant. And that's key to understanding planting depth and the importance of that, keeping that crown healthy. That's why planting depth is so important. You want that crown to be at least uh, three quarters of an inch or so below the, the soil line. And as long as you're planting your seed at a good depth, uh, you're gonna be able to tell that. And in this case, you can actually see here where the seed was by that crook there uh, in that first radical, that first root, still giving you an indication of planting depth. So if you wanna figure out your planting depth uh, here at harvest time, you can still do that. Uh, but make sure that you're looking uh, at this lower part of the, the stalk because that's where these, these uh, root rots are going to come in at. Uh, we've had a lot of moisture this year and they can come in early season. Uh, but if the plant stays healthy, they may not develop into anything major. Uh, but if it's not and the plant's compromised from leaf diseases or things like that, like we got going on right now, um, it can allow these root rots to come in. The other thing is, especially given our genetics, uh, our extremely high yielding genetics in some cases nowadays, those plants and those hybrids really uh, focus on prioritizing getting sugars into that, that ear, wherever the ear is here. Uh, they, they make it a priority to get sugars and carbohydrates into that ear. So if there's an issue, once we get past pollination, they pollinated really well, they got a good ear, if they run into stress with foliar diseases and whatnot, they're gonna prioritize that ear. So they're gonna pull from whatever they have to, including the lower stock, and that's what causes compromises there. Once we start stealing those carbohydrates, we're gonna uh, compromise that, and you're gonna have stock rot issues. So what to look for, split the stem. It's nice to have a shovel. You don't have to carry one, but it's nice to be able to split down through the root system because you can see that crown. Split that open and look at the nodes in particular, the lower nodes. You can see stock rots on the outside of the stem a lot of times too and do the pinch test. You know, if it pinches easily, especially later in the season, obviously that's a bad thing. But right now, um, uh, you can still a lot of times see that. Maybe there's discoloration. Those are gonna, discolorations will indicate that there's a stock rot issue. So 
the common ones, things like uh, uh, fusarium. A lot of times, and especially in the Midwest, fusarium is probably the more common one. I'm um, going to be uh, whitish uh, fungal growth on the outside by the by the nodes. Um, may not have all that much, and then you break open the stem, split that, and you're going to see a disintegration of the pith. Um, just a, a lot of white growth. It's not healthy like this one over here. It's not white and, and uh, solid. It's disintegrating and disintegrating that that uh, rind as well. That fungus is going to uh, eat that rind away as it continues to grow. And thracnose is another one that gets a lot of fame and fortune, especially with uh, top dieback issues. Uh, that, that can be a potential. It has black splotches kind of on the lower part of the stem. Um, we have things like gibberella, that, that pinkish color. A lot of times we think about that with uh, ear rots as well. It's the same pathogen, that pink color. Diplodia is another one that can be small little pinhead black spots on the stem that don't rub off. Um, uh, the other common ones I think of that I see quite a bit nowadays, maybe not in a major uh, uh, event of stock issues, but would be bacterial rot. So we have our physoderma brown spot that we're used to seeing in the, in the upper part of the canopy on that midrib and so forth in the, in the stalk. Uh, that can also cause issues in, in the stalk strength, green snap obviously earlier, but um, a lot of times those bacterial diseases will show up as a big blotch on the lower part of the stem of a sunken tannish, you know, basically a lesion type, big sunken blotch, and they will cave very easily uh, wherever that's at on the stem. So uh, bend over pretty quick. Another thing, and this, this plant here, uh, I have, uh, it was just dying early, um, and it has some major compaction issues here. Uh, as you can see, uh, didn't make it much past three or four inches. Um, the lower part of this stem um, actually has some, uh, if I can get it up here, has some black coming in from around the nodal roots here, you can see in the lower part of this stalk. And so that's another place you can start to see stalk rot issues uh, ramp up. Uh, and and as, as you get later and closer to harvest, you know, just getting those leaf sheaths back, just, you know, wrapping your hand around there and getting those leaf sheaths out of the way. Uh, you'll be able to see the color of that lower stalk. Uh, if it's not green, that's uh, an indication that you're probably going to have some stalk rot issues when you split the stem open. So, uh, how can we manage these stalk rots? So, uh, you know, fungicides can help for sure. Like I mentioned, plant health after pollination is, is very important. Fungicides aren't typically labeled for stalk rots, uh, those pathogens, but the ones, especially the three mode of action ones that keep the plant healthy. Uh, that uh, can help get it through to harvest, uh, re re retain some of that, that rind strength too, and just keep the plant healthy and not robbing as much from the lower stalk. Other thing is obviously is, is selecting your hybrids good. If you have a corn on corn situation, looking at that's probably a, you know, should be pretty far up the list. You should be doing that anyway, but uh, hybrid selection in terms of uh, stalk strength and ability to combat some of these kind of particular diseases. But the last thing I'd say in general, what I see the most issues with when it comes to stalk strength uh, and, and, and well, and disease and then, you know, just rots in general in the lower stalk or the crown is fertility. Uh, and, and typically I, I, I think of number one is gonna be potassium in my mind. Potassium and calcium really help stalk strength as well as things like copper and manganese. So there are some micros involved in and keeping that plant healthy and that, that, uh, that standing at the end of the season. So just because you may have high fertility levels, uh, you know, sometimes that can uh, pull and tug on other nutrients and not let the plant get what it needs. Or maybe you have a rooting issue like in this case. Uh, but uh, remember that a lot of times when it comes to stock issues, uh, fertility is, is a player in that. So uh, those areas that you have in those fields, go out there after harvest when things slow down uh, before you do tillage uh, and pull some some soil tests from that should be anyway but you can pull locally specific soil tests for those areas and then go back if you have corn on corn the next year and pull some tissue tests from that same spot it's pretty easy to pin it on google maps uh, and go back and uh, and put that pin and pull a tissue sample so that you can coordinate between the two and understand what those plants are lacking uh, and fix that issue so fertility is a big driver uh, and obviously we, we're happy to help you with that uh, so reach out to your local liquid grow salesman 
And as always, thanks for watching this week's video, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.